Cyber crime covers a variety of different types of crime. We've got cyber dependent crime, which is crime that's committed through the use of computers or computer networks, such as uh, the spreading of malware, viruses, um, hacking, that's actually cyber dependent crime. We also have what we call cyber enabled crime. That's crime that allows criminals to utilise the internet to perpetrate traditional crimes in terms of financial, uh, the actual harassment and bullying of children, of young people, uh, sorts of you know, accessing various people's accounts and convincing them to give over data or money, which it actually by the fact that they can use computers makes it sort of low risk for the criminal, uh, but high reward in terms of what they can do, and they can do it uh, across the globe. And lastly, we have traditional crimes that are actually due to the scale the internet allows people to you know, conduct human tra trafficking, sell drugs and a variety of other offences. So it covers a whole host of different offences, but actually it's just crime. The biggest threat is, at the end of the day, the cyber criminal is after generally one of two things. They're after money from individuals or businesses, or they're after personal data which they can utilise. So it's key actually we identify what the risks are presented to, to individuals uh, and to companies to make sure we protect against those. Right, what we can all do to protect ourselves is that there's a few simple straightforward things we should all be doing online. It doesn't matter whether you're at home, at work, whether you're, just, whether you're a small business, there are simple safety security advice that we all should be adhering to. Firstly, um, you should be using antivirus software of some sort on your system. And that should be kept up to date, as should your operating system uh, and other than things like your, your Internet Explorer or your Internet Browser software. They all need to be kept up to date and when updates come through, please install them. They quite often contain important security patches to keep you safe. Secondly, have strong, secure passwords. Don't use the same password over multiple sites. Make sure that actually you vary your password compared to your site. Thirdly, simple things like if you get a suspicious email into your internet uh, account and you don't recognise it, please don't open it. Just delete it. If you don't recognise it, delete it in the first place. You can also make sure that actually you don't pass on personal information to third parties who you know, are asking you for information such as your date of birth, bank accounts, when actually you're thinking, why do they need this? Lastly, particularly when social media is concerned, please don't interact with people you don't know. If you're contacted by a third person who you've not met, you've got to be suspicious. Why are they contacting you? What do they want from you? More often than not, they're after your information and they're after your money. We're doing a lot of things. We, we've got what we call a 4P plan, which we're enacting. First part of that is around prevention. Prevention is key. So we're working with local communities to deliver that safety message out to, out to the community. So we're working with our, our local safer neighbourhood teams to run events, to run workshops, uh, to give presentations around keeping yourself safe online. We're producing literature that helps people and businesses keep themselves safe. So the prevention message is key. From a prepare point of view, in terms of Dorset Police, we've trained our staff. So our frontline investigators, our detectives, our intelligence department, you know, the people you'll speak to on the phone when you report these crimes, they know what to do and they know how to protect you. And more importantly, they know how to investigate. We're pursuing criminals. It's a key part of our strategy. So working with our local uh, cybercrime unit, we look at opportunities to actually investigate these crimes. We work with our regional cybercrime unit to actually enact the resources across the region. We then take it a stage further. We have the National Crime Agency who looks at the national picture. But as you know, cybercrime is global. So we work with Europol and Interpol to make sure we've got the right people in the right place doing the right thing. And lastly, we are working with partners to protect. We're making sure 
but actually working across, you know, so working with local government, uh, child services, vulnerable adult services to make sure that actually our vulnerable people in our community are protected. So it's key, we're all working together, we're all in this together, so that, you know, it's a plan that will run on and on and on. There are two key places. You can go to the Dorset Police website where you'll see our CyberSafe logo, which actually, if you click on that, takes you to a variety of other sites you can access security device, or key for both individuals, personal and businesses, get safe online. They've got a message there that helps you keep safe. It covers everything from use of social media, use of different devices, smartphones. It covers a whole breadth of different methods you can keep yourself safe. More importantly, it's up to date. It'll make you aware of the latest scams. It'll make you aware of what's going on. It'll make you aware of the new threats that are being posed to the individuals in Dorset.